Hi people, it's Seth here. Um, I want to talk about a different kind of topic right now. I want to talk to you a little bit about what humans consider to be sex. Now, a lot of you probably don't know this, but I am in fact, well, pretty much a virgin when it comes to physical sex as in penetration of of a body part into a body part. And, um, but I, I know a lot tangentially about what humans, other people, really think about sex, and a lot of it uh, I find very disconcerting, which is part of the reason why I'm not actually interested in taking part in, in, in the modern world's interpretation of the sex act. Uh, now, I do have energetic sex with people that I love and care for, and a lot of that is about raising our energy consciousness and making us ready for, for uh, our, our, our change to energetic beings. And, you know, it's also great pleasure to, to release energy in that way, just as it is to release energy in other bliss states that one might find through practices like yoga. Um, but regarding sex, I'd like to talk a little bit about it. Now, now the reason why I think sex today is troubling is because it's very attached to our consumer culture's uh, image of, of what is attractive. I think that for most people, the sex act has a lot more to do with what they imagine sex to be than the actual act itself. Oftentimes you will hear people saying what they like and oftentimes it's based on some image from the media culture. Maybe it's Daisy Duke or maybe it's some pornography that they picked up off of the internet or maybe it's some strange fetish with some Star Trek creature. It can really run the gamut for what people like and oftentimes it has less to do with the actual exchange of energy and the beautiful connection between two, two, uh, uh, he, you know, humans, and it has more to do with these sort of images and these projections of things that actually are not real. So, you know, two people who who have attraction towards each other, you know, usually it has to do with them fulfilling some sort of fantasy image for the other one, and these fantasy images are really tied up in, in sort of dysfunctional uh, contemporary culture images of what makes good sex. Now, when I watch pornography and I, I see, you know, you know, three people having sex or, you know, more, or I see a lot of people uh, having sex and I see penetration and I hear noise and and I see a lot of uh, c uh, consumer grade plastics involved I see uh, I see synthetic materials I see lubricants which are fake I see dildos which are fake I see you know, other objects that are used in order to heighten the sexual experience. And then I see these people with these projections of these images of each other onto each other. I then see them play acting these roles for each other. And to me, it all just seems very performative and kind of ridiculous. Uh, I think that there are people who are having sex in such a way where it is a real connection between souls, where they're actually seeing the other human as who they are and not projecting upon them some image of, of our sexualized culture that is based on some sort of fake notion of what is attractive. And, and I think that that's, you know, good and positive. I think tantric sex can be very pleasurable for people, and I don't intrinsically have a problem with using sex aids as long as they are, you know, not the end-all be-all of the experience, and they are, they are, you know, like if you, if they use a swing or they use some sort of bolster, you know, these things make sense in order to make the, 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 uh, the penetration more, more, uh, heightened and, and better. Um, 
but the idea of using a lot of vibrators or dildos and, and uh, you know, or wearing a strap-on and whatnot, these ideas to me uh, seem, seem synthetic and go against the, the notion of what, what sex really is, which is a connection of souls. I think intrinsically the true nature of sex is, is to bring us closer together on a physical and a mental and astral plane. And I don't think that it's just some sort of cyborg, you know, fetish factory. Um, now to me a perfect sex act would be, would be also be genderless. I think that it can be very difficult for both men and women when they are seen as being something that's gendered. And I think as, as we grow as a species, this becomes more and more difficult for us as, as, uh, as we sort of our multiplicity of selves you know becomes much broader in in our our perception and i think that a good sex act involves people just saying something like look you have that in between your legs and i have this i would like to get closer to you physically and i think that we should touch each other until these things allow us to to feel a great sense of urgency and attraction towards each other and and we should do something with these things and uh, whatever we feel like doing we should do and they shouldn't get hung up on notions of what is appropriate in regards to their gender and, you know, that involves same-sex and heterosexual unions. And it doesn't really matter. And a big problem with, with physical sex is that it does start to matter. Uh, these gender roles play, in, play into it because of, of the way we've all been conditioned by our media culture and, and by our, just our culture at large to to consider each other as these gendered beings and these these genders they can be traps for us and they can really hold us back they can they can make us think that we should behave in certain ways that aren't natural for us when in fact we might want to act more like a man or more like a woman or what is considered to be those things you know that there are aggressive women and there are passive men and there are aggressive men and passive women and there are people who are aggressive and passive at different times depending on how they feel and these are just parts of being human and the idea of pigeonholing people as, as certain things or having to behave in certain ways like you know our idea of what an orgasm is is not necessarily the same as what it is on porn a woman may make a lot of noise or make very little and it doesn't matter that's not what it's about and a man you know doesn't have to do these sort of male things like pull a woman's hair or you know slap her ass unless of course he you know wants to do those things but but it's not, you know, a woman can do the same thing, and, and it's not, these, these things do not need to be gendered. And the sex act, for the most part, is very gendered because it's based on these sort of um, media culture, consumer culture models of, of what is socially appropriate for people to do. And back to my final point regarding the synthetic nature of sex with the use of of uh, sexual lubricants and such is that in a in a sex act that is completely natural the human being is of optimal health and vitality so that they don't necessarily need all these extras and they don't need to be doped up on viagra or or they don't need to be using massive amounts of lubricant you know of course it's fine to use natural lubricants like aloe vera and such but they don't need to be using you know strawberry flavored lubricants and all sorts of plastics and such to enhance the sexual experience the sex act should come from the body and the mind and 
if if the two humans are completely in tune with one another, they don't necessarily need to use all that extra stuff. Uh, the extra stuff just just cre- creates a, a a falseness to the interaction, and and it becomes you know more more of a of a false experience for them, and you know organic sex you know like organic food grows from from the fruits of the body naturally and it doesn't need a lot of pesticides it doesn't need a lot of you know enhancements in order to become the beautiful experience that it truly can be when it, when it's between two people who actually truly are there to make a connection physical and mental uh, in in a love bliss state that involves uh, physical sex. Namaste.